Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be taking you on our trip to Scotland. We heard so many amazing things about Scotland in the Highlands, and so we really wanted to explore and see what it was all about. We were lucky enough to spend three days there, and by the end of the trip, we were so happy we made it. Scotland was absolutely beautiful and did not disappoint. Without further ado, let's get to it. From Cambridge to Edinburgh, the journey takes about four hours by train. We woke up super early and were definitely half asleep as we stumbled our way through the different train stations. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we mostly napped along the way although we managed to capture the scenery change from the typical rolling green hills to the coastal landscape. As we were arriving closer to Edinburgh, we were waking up and were super excited to start the trip. Yay, so we finally made it to Edinburgh after like a three, four hour train ride. We're a bit hungry, so we're gonna go find some food. We were pretty hungry when we arrived in Edinburgh and had nice breakfast at Hanover 21. Grace got a full Continental and I got an Eggs Benny. Now that we were all refreshed, we were ready to go out and explore. Our first stop was the Scottish National Portrait Gallery. Unlike most typical museums, it is a grand neo-gothic building in red sandstone. Inside, there were these large, beautiful paintings of important historical figures who told us the rich history of Scotland, which included the historical conflicts with England in the 17th and 18th centuries. The main hall also provides a breathtaking view to Scottish history. Just above the first floor runs a processional frieze that depicts many famous Scots. The architectural structure and beauty of the hall was stunning and amplifies the achievements by the Scotsmen. After visiting the Scottish National Portrait Gallery, we went to join a two hour free walking tour. The tour was absolutely fantastic. Our tour guide was insightful and took us up and around the Royal Mile, the center street in the city which connects Edinburgh Castle at the top of the hill to the palace at the bottom of the hill. While it's called the Royal Mile, it actually isn't a mile. The Scots just like to be bigger and better than the English. <laughs> the tour really helped us get orientated to the wonderful city of Edinburgh, and we learned so many new things along the way. The walking tour ended right in front of the National Museum of Scotland, and so we decided to hop right on in. The museum is a comprehensive collection of Scotland's history over the centuries, with everything from fashion to technology to wars. It was a bit odd walking through it for us, I think we just weren't expecting it to be something like that. If you're traveling with a family, then this would be a great place to visit. If you're more interested in arts or stories like us, then we'd recommend going to the Scottish National Portrait Gallery instead of this National Museum. After the National Museum of Scotland, we checked into our hotel, unpacked a bit, and then went out to go find something to eat. As we were walking around, we stumbled upon this really nice restaurant called Elliot's. The atmosphere and food were really nice. We got a calamari starter, a risotto, and a steak with a chocolate cake for dessert. It was so amazing and just what we needed after a pretty long day. The last thing we wanted to do was to catch a view of the sunset over Edinburgh. We climbed up Colton Hill and found several monuments and buildings commemorating various individuals and events. We definitely recommend coming here. It was a spectacular view of the city and we enjoyed the view to end our day.
After a good night's rest, we woke up and felt super refreshed. The plan for the day was to go to the Scottish Highlands on an all-day bus tour, so we grabbed a quick breakfast at McDonald's and made our way over. The bus tour was originally scheduled for nine and a half hours, and it would have taken us all the way to Loch Ness with plenty of stops along the way. Unfortunately, there was a car crash on the road during the day, and so our journey was cut a little short. However, we still got to see and experience the Scottish Highlands, starting with some Highland coos. So we're at one of our first pit stops um, with these Highland cows, which are basically like hairy coos as they call them. And so we just popped into here and bought um, some food for them. This is about a pound. So we're gonna go feed them. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun to feed the coos. I wish we could have taken them home with us. <laughs> it's like, I don't care. <laughs> After this first stop, we hopped back on the bus and enjoyed the scenery of the Scottish Highlands. The next bus stop was Glencoe, where we had a quick photo stop. It was really surreal to be in this valley with the mountains on either side of us. Unfortunately, this is the part where the accident happened and so we had to start looping back and couldn't make it all the way up to Loch Ness. However, we did manage to stop along several other locks along the way and captured this footage. The Scottish Highlands were absolutely breathtaking and we were so happy we got to visit them. Even with the shortened tour, we didn't get back into Edinburgh until around 7pm so we grabbed some takeout for dinner and went back to Calton Hill to catch the sunset. Today was our last day in Edinburgh and we still had so much that we wanted to see. We woke up early, got our usual breakfast, and walked down the Royal Mile toward the palace. We had a quick peek of the palace from the outside and sat down for breakfast close by. We were fueling ourselves in preparation for a morning hike of Arthur's Seat. The hike up Arthur's Seat was actually really exhausting and a little bit scary. <laughs> How tired are you? You're tired. It's steeper than it looks, that's for sure. Same. Arthur's Seat is an ancient volcano which rises above Edinburgh to a height of 822 feet. The panoramic views from the hilltop were stunning and we would definitely recommend doing this hike if you're in town. It was so high. <laughs> I mean, we are still so high. 
At the bottom of Arthur's seat, there was this nice little lake where we fed some geese. It didn't go exactly as we had planned initially, but we figured it out in the end. By now it was around mid-morning and we had tickets to go into Edinburgh Castle. We walked back up the Royal Mile, collected our tickets, took a few pictures, and strolled right in. Edinburgh Castle is a world-famous icon of Scotland and part of Edinburgh's World Heritage Site. The castle was built on volcanic rock and the oldest parts of the castle date back to the early 12th century. It has had a tumultuous history, having been captured twice by English invaders and twice retaken by the Scots. It houses the crown jewels of Scotland, the Stone of Destiny, the One O'Clock Gun, and the National War Museum of Scotland. There was so much history to this castle, and here are just some snippets of all that this great castle offers. After the castle, we had one more thing we wanted to cross off our bucket list. St. Giles Cathedral is one of Scotland's most important parish church buildings. It was founded in the 12th century and has had additions throughout the centuries as seen from the changes in the architecture inside. We signed up for a free tour of the cathedral, which was really, really informative and learned a little bit about its rich history. Even with all of its notable history, one of the most significant pieces of the cathedral is the fact that it houses the chapel for the Order of the Thistle. With our tour, we actually got to see the inside of this chapel, which is normally closed to the public. The Order of the Thistle is a chivalric order given as a personal gift by the monarch to people who have given good and great service to the country, through their country, for the world. Each knight or lady of the order is allotted a stall in the chapel above his or her heraldic devices which are displayed. Perched on the pinnacle of their stalls is a helm, decorated with mantling and topped by their crest. This was such an incredible historical space to experience and the perfect way to end our trip. All right, so we're on our way to the train station to catch our train home. Got some pizza as a snack. Oh gosh. Dinner. We'll be sad to say bye. Yeah, Edinburgh's great. Love it. <laughs> Woo, Scotland! <laughs>